President Biden has signed a landmark bill into law that provides protections to both same-sex and interracial marriages. It is called the Respect for Marriage Act, and it requires states to recognize same-sex marriages. It also means same-sex couples have the same federal benefits as any married couples. Here's what President Biden said about the historic legislation. Folks, racism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, transphobia, they're all connected. But the antidote to hate is love. This law and the love it defends strike a blow against hate in all its forms. And that's why this law matters to every single American, no matter who you are or who you love. This bill is a step in the right direction for marriage equality, but the legislation is simply that. It's just one step, because there are, there's a gap in the protection for same-sex couples in the bill. That's because currently 32 states ban same-sex marriage in their constitution, state law, or both. Mm, that's why Obergefell is important, but we don't know what's going on there. Let's bring in Marty Gould Cummings. Marty Gould Cummings is a drag Hi, artist. Greetings. Greetings, yes, and Marty is a political activist. Marty was at the White House when the president signed the Respect for Marriage Act. Marty, thank you for being here today. I'm so excited to speak with you. I, I want to start with a, a little bit of a reality check, if we can. You were invited to the White House to witness the signing of this historic bill, and after that signing, you were targeted on social media. Tell us how that day went from celebratory to scary for you. Uh, well, first of all, like you said, this is historic legislation to help protect LGBTQ families and interracial families, but it's just one step in the road, like the president said. We have to pass the Equality Act. We have to ensure that we're fully codifying marriage rights because oftentimes couples, if they're traveling uh, or if they're not able to get married in their state, even though it's being recognized under this legislation, a lot of couples can't afford to travel to another state to get married. Uh, but like you said, after the invitation, there was an onslaught of hate uh, that came up. And this is something that we're seeing happening on the rise in this country. Uh, Meta and Twitter are not doing anything to help combat this. We've seen a 1,200% increase in the word groomer, uh, the slur groomer. On, um, on Twitter, and I'm grateful to have the support and the guidance of GLAAD, a great organization working on these issues. Um, but that online rhetoric is dangerous. Just the other day, the House Committee held a hearing on how uh, online hate against yes. LGBTQ people is transferring to real life. We saw it in Colorado. In 47 states, we've seen 150 different attacks and protests at drag shows. One just happened today in New York City, in Chelsea, a couple of hours ago, where protesters showed up to a library. So the online rhetoric is now coming into the real world, and the these online... social media... Marty, the online rhetoric has has always um, has has not all has has always been connected to what is happening in the real world, and I think that point is so important. Um, and and the committee that you talked about, the hearing that was held, it the juxtaposition of the bill signing um, and then the day after the House Committee on Oversight and Reform highlighting the rise in violence and threats against the LGBTQ plus community was just. A lot. It was a lot. I mean, as of December 12th of this year, there were 141 incidents of LGBTQ mm -hmm. protests and threats targeting specific drag events just in the United States. And you noted there's one in, in Chelsea today. What, what effect has this had on you and your, your fellow drag artists? Well, I think we have to look at what happened at Pulse and what happened in, in Colorado Springs. Uh, uh, a, a community that's still reeling. I hope people go to their GoFundMe page and help them, but it's a real danger. And I think a lot of performers and people who go out are scared because of this. And also when you have a drag story hour, which is a positive event, a positive way to teach kids the value of acceptance and love um, and education, uh, but they're twisting it set, using old talking points saying drag artists are groomers and pedophiles, which is not true. We've never seen a kid harmed at a drag story hour. The real harm comes when grown adults show up with guns outside screaming as families walk in. So this rhetoric is dangerous. And, and, and the pundits who are talking about it on networks like Fox and Breitbart, the politicians like Lauren Bobart and Marjorie Taylor Greene who are forcing this negative agenda, uh, it's, it's leading their followers to act out in violent ways 
Words like groomer uh, against queer people, those are tropes from the past. We've let that go. 71% um, of Americans support marriage equality. 21% of Gen Z identifies yeah. as LGBTQIA+. And the reality is these people, as they see other people's rights being recognized, they are running with fear. The GOP, the right wing, they don't have a platform. So their platform Marty. is to elevate hate. Marty, I like to say the, the culture wars were never a distraction for some of my Republican friends. They have been the playbook for the Republican Party apparatus. I'm very happy you named the names and called the folks out because is hate no longer hate when it's codified in legislation? Okay, when people are elected officials? I appreciate your voice and your time. Marty Gould Cummings, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much.